Hi everyone, welcome to Introduction to IDEA, Data Analysis by Caseware. My name is King Ivy, and this is Lesson 2. In today's lessons, we'll be discussing how to import data from various data formats. As you can see on the left-hand side, you'll see the Dropbox link, which I'll also include in the description, which will contain all the files that we will be using throughout this lesson set. In this case, we'll be using three different file formats, country admissions Excel document, customer access database, unemployed text file. And the reason why you want to know how to import these various data formats is that you'll be given data in all these various formats. And in my experience, it's important to know how to import and adjust your analysis using these different formats. The first thing we want to do is open up the IDEA application. So again, I'm using version 9.1. Second step is to click this create and we'll be creating a new project. So let's call this lesson two. The next step we want to do is go to the Dropbox, copy all the files, go to lesson two folder, which is created because we created that new project, go to the source files folder, and I recommend pasting all the files. And the reason why you want to paste all your files here is that when you import the data, IDEA will first look in this folder. And that will just allow you to create some efficiencies. So the first file we want to import is this country admissions Excel document. To import the data, we want to click this desktop plus icon. So we'll click there. And since this was an Excel document that we want to import, we're going to click this Excel. And then we're going to open up the little browser with three little dots. And we're going to find the appropriate file, which in this case is this country admissions file. We'll double click and we'll go to next. And there's a couple important factors that we want to look here. So in this case, it's asking us what sheet we want to import. In this case, there's only one sheet. So this is an easy answer. There's a couple of questions here. So do we want to have the first row be field names? In this case, we do. Do we want to import empty numeric cells as zero? You can click this. Um, typically, it doesn't matter too much. And then you want to see where you've imported the file from, which looks correct, and what you want your output file name is. So in this case, I'm going to leave it as a default country admissions. So you'll press OK. And then you'll see that the file has imported. What we want to check is, has the file been imported correctly? And there's a couple of ways to approach this. The easiest way I find to approach this is to do field statistics. So the first thing we, there's two ways to check it. We want to check either do a hash total, which is check the total number of records, and then do a, a sum total, which is the total value of a certain column. In this case, we're going to look at carbon and see that the value, when we look at, open up the Excel document, that there's going to be 1,200 rows, and the value is going to be 144,304 and 40 cents. In fact, the field statistics contains a lot of great data, including the number of zero items, negative number of values, net value, a lot of great analysis to understand and interpret, interpret and classify your data. So let's open up this Excel document and let's take a look. So in this case, you'll see that country emissions carbon does in fact add up to the $144,304.40. Uh, it's not dollars, but it's in admission units, but you understand where I'm coming from. And then you'll see it goes up to row 1201, which is, if you exclude the title, would mean that there's 1,200 records. Oftentimes, you'll run into files that are greater than a million lines, so you'll have to come up with creative ways of obtaining the record count and as well the sum check. And this can be obtained usually from the system where you've extracted the data. So that's the Excel document. Next thing you want to do is import the access document, which is going to be this customer.mdb. 
So we want to import an access document, so Microsoft Access. And then you'll see that there's only one file option here. So it's going to be a pretty simple choice. So we'll double click. We'll go to Next. And then it asks you which table. So in an access database, you can have many tables. So in this case, we only have one. So it's going to be a very simple check. So you can either use scan all or scan a certain number of records. So in this case, I'm going to use scan all because I know that there's only a few number of records. You may want to use scan only, and this helps improve performance. But where possible, I recommend using scan all. So in this case, you're going to create an output file. We're going to call it customer. And we're just going to go with that default format. So we're going to press OK. And then you'll see the file looks OK. And there's some quick checks that you can perform. Well, for, for example, double clicking any of the headers. And then you'll see it sorts ascending and descending accordingly. And you can see whether or not there's any funky values. But again, we do want to do the field statistics. In this case, we have a field called credit limit. And we see that the net value is 21 million. 304,000 and there's 341 records. So what we want to do next is open up this access document, open up in access, double click. You'll see that if we go to the very bottom that there are in fact 341 records. And what I like to do with access documents, if, if it's possible, I like to copy the column that we're totaling Open up Excel, check that there are the same number of records in case, in this case, 341. So we have 342. If we exclude the title, it'll be 341. And then we see that it does tie to the 21,304,000. So that's great. And it's, and really you want to do that check every single time you import the data. And majority of the time, it's not going to be an issue. But you don't want to run into that situation where you're importing and analyzing your data off of, off of false information. So it's a very important, even if it is successful, majority of the time. The last data format that we're going to import is going to be a text file. And the file is called unemployed.txt. So we're going to click Desktop Plus. We're going to find a text file. And in this case, if we had already imported this file before or a similar format, we could have leveraged it. And this would be in your import definition. But we do not have that currently. So we're going to find this unemployed TXT file. Double click. And we're going to go next. And in this case, there's a lot, there's a couple, probably a couple of different options that we can take here. So let's just take a look. You can either do delimited, fixed length. Uh, this adjusted fixed length, but let's try delimited. So you'll see that delimited did work because it has a little bit of a preview below. And you'll see that there's different ways you can separate the data, whether it's common, colon, semicolon, tab, space, or other. So I really recommend that you try the delimited file format before you try the fixed length because you don't want to be guessing and, and get it wrong. So we want the first row, first visible row is field name. So that's correct. So we'll click there. So now it's become the field name. And then text encapsulator, header lines ignored. So if we, for example, if you had some data that, for example, the oftentimes you'll see the query or the date at the top that the report was run and that may not be relevant so you may want to exclude some lines but in this case we're going to leave it as is. We're going to go next and this is a little bit more work and the advantage of importing a text document is that it allows you to help define the data uh, in the appropriate format. So if you had recognized before when we imported the Excel document it would have imported year as a numeric value and year is a number, but it's not necessarily a field that you would use to, to add together and come up with meaningful information. And the example I usually fall back on is student ID. 
you wouldn't add two students' IDs, IDs together. It's more so similar. Even though it's not a set of numbers, it's more similar to a name. So in this case, we would want student number to be a character as opposed to uh, a numeric type, even though it is a number. So we want to put character. You can also choose not to import this field. And you can put a description. But in this case, we're going to leave it blank for now. And you can see various examples. Uh, the next field we're going to use is year. So again, I don't find it particularly useful to add up two years together. So I'm going to leave this as a character. And then you'll see the example format. Same thing with period. Period is something, it's not necessarily useful to add up two periods together. It's more useful to treat it as a character so we can classify and summarize on that particular field. And then people. So in this case, this is unemployed. So what I'm going to assume is that this people field column is the number of people unemployed for this particular country during this year, during this period. So I'm going to leave it as numeric. And I know that there can't be 0.1 person, 0.5 person. So I'm going to leave it as zero decimal places. But if you were dealing with amount, you may leave it as two decimal places. If you were dealing with uh, interest rate percentages or or some number that required more decimal places uh, then you may expand the number of decimal places and then we're going to go next and this is where you can apply any filters uh, or create any additional fields uh, based off of the parameters but in this case we're going to leave it for now so in this case we can limit the data so for example if we didn't want any data older than 2004 uh, or any data with uh, certain parameters, uh, we can apply some filters. Or we only want to look at a certain state, then we may apply the filters. But in this case, we're going to leave it. Then you go next. And then you, we're, we're going to want to generate field statistics. That's great. And then you're going to see where the definition is going to be saved. So in this case, it's going to be in this import definition. So if you were to import, say, another country, say Canada, and instead of state and maybe province but similar notion and apply the uh, be able to import that data as long as it's in similar format you'll be able to leverage this we want to save it here that's great and then the obviously the database name so we're going to leave it as default so press ok again we want to look at field six people you'll see that the net value is uh, 765,000 or 765,313,683. And let's take a look at this particular data set. I find the easiest way is to paste it into Excel. Hopefully it'll cooperate, and it does. Fantastic. So you'll see that there are 5,408 records. And in this case, there are 5,409, excluding the title we match. And then we see that the, the sum also matches between the two. So that's really great. So we have successfully imported an Excel document, a Microsoft Access document, and a text file. So this will help you get you going before you start doing your analysis. And don't forget to do your record and sum checks because it's super important. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.